All right, beautiful brown people. We are here. It is 1 p.m. and it is Thursday. Oh my God, we are almost done with yet another work week because I am tired. I am tired. I am tired. I am tired. But we are here for yet another session of Breaking Ground, the Coffee Break Live. Oh, it has been a week. It has been a week. It has been a week. And we have been working through it. We are making our way. We are doing our best, holding ourselves accountable for our wellness. Um, so I want to thank you for joining in and making sure that you are taking care of yourself today. We have some new faces, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are here every weekday, 1 p.m., having all of the discussion, focused and grounded in wellness. So today, we are talking about something that came across, which most often happens, came across my feed, my timeline on Instagram, and that is gaslighting, but particularly racial gaslighting, which is a little different conversation. We talk about gaslighting in, um, well, not in this space, but I've spoken about gaslighting pertaining to narcissists, gaslighting pertaining to relationships, just gaslighting in general. And I'm just gonna give you a quick informal definition of gaslighting. It is when someone is manipulating information in a way that makes the victim or the person who they are manipulating question their own experience, their memory of that thing, um, or their reality. People who gaslight often do this to avoid having to take their own account, own accountability or to avoid having to feel guilty to the fact that they benefit from something that harms you. So, Gaslighting 101, that's where we are. So when it comes to understanding what racial gaslighting is, and I promise you, we've been seeing it, we've been seeing it, we've been seeing it in two people who are in this conversation today. I was just having this discussion and that's why we are turning to this point um, related to the Philadelphia Inquirer making that post or making that news story. Um, and they can speak to that a little bit more that buildings are important too or something of that sort. Um, and then apologizing thereafter. That is a prime example of gaslighting. So when it comes to understanding and navigating and surviving racism, we've had to deal with it our entire lives. We know it when we see it. People who have never experienced it before don't care to unlearn their toxic behavior, their conditioning, and they'll attempt to exhaust you. And I know that a lot of us, myself included, are feeling exhausted. It is not 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 and we talked about this this week yesterday primarily when we resumed the conversation about boundaries and how it pertains to this that it is not your job not your role not your responsibility to teach somebody how to not be a racist they'll exhaust you with their silence they'll exhaust you so you silence yourself they'll exhaust you so you'll doubt yourself and they'll exhaust you so you normalize the treatment that you're receiving so you have to trust yourself and remember that you are worthy, you matter, you're safe, all of the things. So let's dive in to this conversation of racist gaslighting. Um, by a, you can write in the chat or you can speak out on it. When was the time that you were gaslighted that did not have to pertain to racism? Because I want us to just make sure we understand what gaslighting is in the first place. So when was the time that you were gaslighted and it had nothing to do with racism? You can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat. Has anyone been gaslighted before? Um, I feel like a lot of times we're gaslighted in relationships, like unhealthy relationships. You know, sometimes people will spin things, situationships, amen, Jay. Jay, you know what? You take this one, baby girl. You take it. This is yours. Yes, yeah, because Jay hit the nail on the head with situationships. Go ahead, Jay. That's it. It's the situationships. Um, just the term in itself, um, I feel, is a gaslighting term um, because there are, um, there are two people in the relationship but when it comes to a situationship, one person isn't on the same page as the other. And I feel that in those situations, that is manipulation, right? So it makes the, 
makes one party feel like they're going towards something or pulling away from something that's actually not, um, I guess, not the reality for both. Um, and when you're in a situation ship, um, whether you're the culprit or, or the victim, um, you have to be, um, you're being faced head on with like feelings and thoughts and um, figuring out if you want to interpret it one way or, or another, right? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm in my feelings, so I can't really, <laughs> I can't really express it the right way, but um, we've all been there. Feel the feels. Oh. Um, yes, feel the feels. Highlighting some like, components of gaslighting. It's making you, I don't know a better way to say it, but it's making you to feel like you're crazy. I'm sorry, um, Aiden. Sorry, y'all. I gotta be that parent. Okay, so we're just gonna edit that out and we'll, we're gonna come back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, <laughs> um, I love that, Courtney. I have an example as an educator. Um, I think about like when you're in a classroom and you're giving feedback to a kid, and their response is like, you're doing too much. You're like, I didn't do it when you blatantly saw them doing it. And then you're second guessing yourself. And you're like, wait, were they talking? Were they not talking? Were they throwing something? Um, but I think that's a common one for educators. Yes, gaslighting 101. Gaslighting 101. Do we have any other examples of gaslighting before we pour into racial gaslighting? Because we are experiencing it now. We are. Oh, excuse me. I need to take my allergy tablet, y'all. I don't oh. have any examples, but I do want to say, like, I'm I'm really glad that you're bringing this up as a topic, um, because I because I think people are afraid to actually say this out loud and really put a name on it. Um, and I don't think a lot of people knew that's what it was called. So I, you know, I just want to validate you, ma'am, because this is this is a dope um, concept to think about. You know. Yes, and it might become one of our regular topics because it's going to keep happening until change occurs, right? So I can't take all of the credit for today's conversation. Um, two men who I have regular FaceTime discussions with about the shenanigans that we are dealing with at work are on this call today. Um, and we were just talking about this topic. I am so happy that they have joined us. And I'm going to give the floor to Gig for a moment to hear more about what the Philadelphia Inquirer wrote and how their apology came thereafter. You're on mute, kid. Yeah, you have to unmute. <clears throat> Gig, unmute yourself, because it's not working on my end. Oh, no, I actually hit stay <laughs> muted. <laughs> <laughs> I just read it too fast. So um, basically, the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, says reporters, Philadelphia Inquirer reporters skip work after paper publishes Buildings Matter Too. Um, so, do you want to speak, me to speak on how I feel about this in particular, or do you want me? Um, I actually just feel. It's kind of weird. I, I feel a very numb rage of just like, now you see why we, we tear buildings up. Like now you see it. Like now you, like you rather, you rather talk more so about a building than the life of a person, than the life of a, of a black person. You, you would rather mourn the, the and cry over over the, the cathedral in France, um, that in France being one of the most, uh, one of the biggest empires and oppressors of not only their people, but also the people of Haiti. And you, and you wanna cry over that and you wanna send money for that. And it just, it, just gets to, it just gets back to the point of the black life and whether it actually does matter. And I mean, this is very clear. It's very clear that, it, that to, a very wide audience that it, that it doesn't it doesn't matter at all 
And um, it just, to me, it just helps me understand why at some points I don't necessarily want to be peaceful. Like how, how can you be peaceful when you tell me that that building is more important than my, than, than my soul, than, than, than my, than the blood that goes through my, my veins. How, like, that, I, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. These are the things that we've been discussing over because it's like, how can you expect us to remain, just like you said, peaceful? How can you expect us to continue carrying on? Um, which once leads me to another, um, another way that racial gaslighting is. So I'm about to provide y'all with different examples of racial gaslighting, right? So the first one is, if you protested it, if you protested, or said it peacefully, more people would listen to you. How many times have we heard that one? How many times have we protested peacefully? How many years have we protested peacefully? Um, I, for one, am not a person who actively participates in protests. I think that, for me, it's not, it's, it's not enough action for me. I would rather be the person that sends emails because I could send an email all day. Something goes wrong, guess what? I'm gonna write you, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna blow up your phone, you're gonna hear from me and I'm gonna want an answer. Um, fax mess, you're gonna hear from me from fax, email, phone, something. I'm one of those people who is action oriented in that way. And we've had this discussion where it's like, find your voice, use it in whatever way you feel um, authentic to you. Um, Taylor, explain that though. I disagree. You do protest. You don't rally. So tell me, tell me a little bit more. So the actions that you are taking are a protest. That is a form of protest. Some of us do not rally. So, you know, being the climate, safety reasons, whatever have you, some of us may not choose to go out, go out and rally and be present on it on mainstream and you know participate in looting or just peaceful peacefully um rallying together amongst others but the action that you're taking buying black is a protest yeah. choosing to yeah. write letters to legislation is a protest all those things in which you are doing to speak out against the injustice is a protest so you know don't speak against yourself and say that you're not protesting you are protesting it just looks a little different than what we are seeing on social media or mainstream right now. Thank you for giving me that great Taylor, because you know what? And one thing that we talked about, I think it was yesterday, the days are starting to blur, but we've had some really, really good conversation. Um, and how it was yesterday, how even black people are guilting people for not being on the front line or not doing enough. So we have to be mindful of People are doing things in their own way and what they can do best, right? Deja wrote in the chat, and this is a really good example, actually. If insert victim's name would have just complied with the police, then dot, dot, dot. And we'll just say then this thing wouldn't have happened. Then these people wouldn't have protests. Then they would still be alive. We're just going to name it, right? And they're saying that, so this is another form of gaslighting. So we have another one. <clears throat> What I said or what I did is not racist. How many times have we heard that in the workplace, in public spaces, on social media? Oh, I'm cutting out. Can you guys hear me? Corey, you're cutting out a lot. Oh, goodness. Hold on one second. Give me a moment. No, it's really slow. Try from getting from underneath that um, area. I'm just gonna take a walk. Are we gonna take a walk? And we're gonna reflect on a time where you might have been racially gaslighted this week. I need y'all to drop into the chat and tell me a little bit about it. Has anyone been racially gaslighted this week? That's that's the signal. I just write it out. Okay, can you hear me now? You hearing me? 
Are we good audio wise? Yes, we are. We're good. Okay, I'm back in the house. Hold on, let me bring down. I didn't break your shade. I'm going to have to really edit this one today. This is a real thing. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what I said, what I did isn't racist. Or racism doesn't exist anymore. It was a joke. Calm down. Black people are racist too. Why is it always about race? Are you sure that that's what's happened? Just to play devil's advocate here. In my opinion, I don't think they were being racist. I think that. So out of those statements that I've made, which one have you heard recently? Which one have you heard before? I could say all of them. Every last one of them. Yeah. Most Every of them. Last one. Um, same here, every last one of them, but the one that grinds my gears the most is the Let's Play Devil's Advocate. That one sends me off the edge. Like, that one will make me start acting real ignorant real quick. Like, that one sends me every single time. The Let's Play Devil's Advocate, like, yeah, let's play it. Let's play Devil's Advocate as if I'm not a professional and I'm going to bust your ass right now. Let's play that. Or, so you're identifying yourself as the devil because... <laughs> if you're going to be his advocate, that means you're stepped in his place, right? So you know that you dead wrong if you want to play his advocate. <laughs> Call a spade a spade because that's what that is. When I hear that, that's what I hear. What I personally, I personally feel like all of these things that are happening, um, it scares the others. I'm not going to say just white people, but the others yeah. um, because it makes them have to confront things that they've convinced themselves that black people are about or represent mm -hmm. and if they admit that these things that are happening to black people is actually wrong then they have to change within themselves um, something yeah. that maybe they they never really wanted to identify or um, have in the forefront, you know. Um, no one likes to be called out, like just in general, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to race, um, especially for those who claim to have never experienced racism, um, and I'll say in terms of that, like um, people who can pass for white or people who have um, the perception of being white, um, they they purposely use that as privilege to disconnect themselves from the bigger picture of this experience may not be my own, but it doesn't mean that it's not valid, right? Um, actually, just to kind of go into this, earlier today, I was watching a video on Instagram and it was eerie because um, it was a video of Sandra Bland talking about Black Lives Matter and um, the situations that were going on in, in the moment. And I didn't even pay attention to like the caption or anything. And I just kept saying, dang, this girl looks a lot like Sandra Bland. Looks a lot like her. And she kept saying, Sandra speaks, Sandra speaks. So I was like, oh, maybe she just happened to look like her or whatever. And come to find out it actually was her talking about all of these injustices. And then it cut to when she was arrested and when she, you know, when she was approached by the police and all that stuff. And it scared me because I'm like, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist in this way, but I'm thinking, was she actually targeted? Was she somebody that they saw as a threat because she was actually saying these things out loud and people were noticing and they were like, you know what? 
let's shut her up. Let's find a way to, to, to make her more silent, you know? And, you know, unfortunately she lost her life and, but it scared me. And I'm like, yo, like it don't take nothing for us to become a hashtag. And this woman, I don't know, or I don't know, you know, beforehand, I don't know anything about her, but like, just from that little clip in the video, it was like that passion that she had for identifying injustice, for talking about her own experiences growing up in a pre predominantly white town and how she had to learn how to navigate all of those spaces. Um, and still, even in all of that rant, she still was trying to find a way to give white people the pass and saying like, I know that they're the mess, they're a mess, y'all, but we still got to figure out how to navigate in these white spaces. So still kind of giving them an, ex you know, uh, an olive branch and then they still killed her. It's like, yo, like, what do you do with that? How do you like, how do you process that? This girl who wanted to just be vocal, just talk about what's been going on, what we all see. Um, and then she still becomes the same victim that she's, she's trying to bring awareness to. I don't know. I'm, that might have been a rant, y'all, but it just, it really. It's a good one. It, it sat on me and it like freaked me out for a minute because I because it didn't even click that that was actually her speaking. It almost felt like a ghost talking. You know what I mean? Like oh, it was crazy. It's it's scary to see like old footage like that surface and then mm -hmm. connect the dots. So yeah. very well. It, and it's also I'll just name for you like it's also very hard not to think that this led to this. Mm -hmm. it's hard to not feel that way. Um. And it also leaves us in a space of not knowing. Like, we may never know. We may never get the answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. But there are three things that I want us to, like, really take away from today's conversation. Because racial gaslighting is going to happen. It's going to continue, especially as people tell you, oh, I'm not racist. We hear that all the time. But what are you doing to, to actually show, actually tell us? that you're not racist. Actions speak louder than words. We say that all the time. And it is not our job, and I think I said this yesterday, it's not our job to teach somebody how to not be racist. Google works very well. There are plenty of books, and I think I saw a story or something on Instagram saying um, certain books were flying off the shelf. Not the one of how to not be an anti-racist, but the other one, the... Um, the help? Which I one? Saw one about the help. I seen a post saying that that's fl uh, flying off, and people are Not looking the into help. that. It was the one about the white, the white person, something to something. I have to look it up, and then I'll post it. Um, it wasn't the help though, but that is also a good book that showcases like what. Yes, Deja, white fragility is flying off of the shelves right now. It is, Deja. Why do you think that that book is flying off the shelves? Um, I think it's fine off the shelf because people, well, and I can only speak for some of my colleagues, you know, working in education who are white. They've been in this raceless bubble all their lives, right? Where they've never had to grapple with us, any situation that had to do with their race. And now that it's in our faces every day, every moment, like you can't avoid it anymore. And people are now having to sit with that truth that their whiteness has been privileged by the system and now you're being held accountable and you can't hide it anymore you can't you know avoid it or ignore it anymore so there's this white fragility where even um there was this video that surfaced um where there was this group of white people they were like on their hands and knees and begging and um begging for forgiveness from like a group of black people and you know allies and stuff who were protesting and i couldn't feel like I couldn't empathize with the, the white people, right? Because I'm just like, yesterday, <laughs> continue. Sorry. I'm just like, uh, we don't need your white guilt, right? We don't need your tears. We don't need this frag, like this fragile, like image of you, like begging and crying about your ancestors and what you didn't know and what you what you know now. What we need you to do is act, right? Because now you know, and now you can't say that you don't understand. And I think that. You know, people have this idea, um, now that we talk about equity a lot, people have this idea that in order to embrace equity, they have to give up certain things that they possess and certain things that they own. But I framed it in a way when I was talking to a friend about, you know, say you're at a friend's house and 
you're at a dinner and the food is running out. And I was just like, would you go up and get a second plate, even though you're not hungry? Or would you let the person who you know doesn't have, you know, food like that, who is hungry, get the plate? And I think when we think about equity in that way, it sort of breaks down that fragility that white people live with where they feel like, oh, well, if we give all the resources to black or Hispanic people, then what's going to be left for us? And, you know, that's not what we're saying and that's not what equity is about. So it's just like you need to check your fragility and you need to be okay with sitting with the things that make you uncomfortable about race because it's the first time that you've had to grapple with it. And you can't expect Black people to always bear the burden of educating and enlightening you. Like, now it's time for you to do the work. And if you're uncomfortable, just think about the centuries that we've always been uncomfortable, you know, in this country. And, and you know, let that be that thing that motivates you to want to get up and act on your own. Asia is opening a Montessori preschool for our Black children, y'all. I just needed to name that she is opening a Montessori preschool for our black children. Aiden will be in attendance. If he's not her first student, he will be her second because Tynesha, who is not in here, I know that Renee will be there. <laughs> so, Deja, thank you for sharing that. Um, that perspective is so important and actually segues right into Julie's perspective, which is for me being Dominican, my own people irritate me when it comes to racial injustices. A lot of Latinos are really brainwashed to think we aren't Black and they don't see Black and brown people as one. So thank you for being transparent with that, Julie. Um, and I know that you share a very, we've had conversations about this, you share a very different perspective because you are raising a Black son and it is very important for you to participate in these conversations as well. So I'm so happy that you joined us today. Jay posted a video that I would love to bring up, but we have five minutes left. So if you could click that link and make sure that you um, check into it when um, we are done with the coffee break today. This video kept coming up on my timeline when racism was put on blast here. White people saw it clearly. I love it. Is that the video, Jay, of the, of the older white woman who talked about racism? Yep. I love, I, I love that lady. I love that lady. So long ago, and it really highlighted. Um, thank, uh, thank you, Ole. See you later. Um, I saw her video, and she was showcasing how no white person stood up when she said, "If you want to, if you would want to experience what black people experience in America, this is just a really oversimplified way of saying mm -hmm. it." In the video, if you want to experience what black people experience in America, stand up, and nobody stood up. And then she said, no, I don't think you heard the instructions correctly. If you would want to experience what Black people experience here in America, please stand up. And so nobody stood up. And she's like, okay, exactly. So clearly we have a problem. And this was years ago. So there was a white woman who got it and understood it years ago. And still nothing happened. Nothing happened. So it would have been lovely to see, um, to see how it, it. Did you ever see the video of the same lady? Um, she was in a college setting and she was teaching something, this racism. Mm -hmm. And I remember her going back and forth with a white student and the, white, the, the girl was trying to justify, you know, diminish what racism really is. And at a point she shut down and yes, Jane Elliott. And Jane called her out and she said, you see what you just did? You shut down because now you become so uncomfortable, you don't want to face it anymore. But if you think about what black people go through every single day of their lives, they don't get that option. They don't get that privilege to say, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm going to step out of this role and just act like it doesn't exist. She said, that is exactly what privilege is. Now get the hell out of my class. I'm like, yes, get him, get him. But that really speaks to what Deja was saying about right, white fragility and how yep. they're not ready to handle it. Um, yep. So Deja wrote, I think relying on the help your form, as your form of education is telling because it still centers on whiteness and that is very true. It was centered around that family and not really about the woman who was working for the family. It's crazy because it's trending on Netflix as well. The help is on Netflix now? I didn't know that. Very interesting. 
Um, yeah, they put it up there part of that Black Lead series. And that's why everybody was saying how it's concerning that that's what's trending right now. Of all the books and movies and right. things that you can reach out to to try to get some form of knowledge. Because as you said, it's not our job to teach you. Yeah. That's the one they go to. Yeah, Viola was not playing that role in that movie. She, I didn't feel like she was the lead in that movie. But um, another day, another conversation. <laughs> so, so we have less than two minutes. I want to give you these reminders to deal with this racial gaslighting, right? So it goes back to what I've been saying about don't let somebody be more important than they actually are. But really, do not let anyone tell you how to feel about something they've never had to experience in their body. So that's number one. We have three tips. Number one is don't let anybody tell you how to feel about something they've never had to experience. Two, don't exhaust yourself arguing with someone who is more concerned about not being called racist than simply doing the work to be anti-racist. If you present them with the what you can do and they're still telling you, and let me just rename it is not your job to present them with that and i have less than a minute um it's gonna cut me off so if you present them with that and they're more concerned with not being a racist let them go don't waste your time your energy this is your boundary and then number three don't spend any time trying to prove why something is racist your experience is your expertise we are the experience of this shit back to hashtag do that shit because we want to keep with it this week we are the experts and no one can tell you whether you felt like you were wrongfully treated or whether something was unjust or unjust. That is your experience. That is your expertise. So we will be back here tomorrow. Zoom is about to cut me off. This will go up today. I've been sitting at the computer waiting for them to load. Please share it as soon as you see it so other people can join in the conversation with us tomorrow as we close out the week and ground our.